Hey guys, we are talking distance today, specifically the distance between two points. For this example, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. If you want to see me do the same problem using the distance formula, which we actually get from the Pythagorean theorem, I'll link it in the corner for you. Okay, but the Pythagorean theorem, you're probably familiar with it. We've got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I just ran up the stairs from talking to my kids, sorry. A little out of breath. Okay. <laughs> Pythagorean theorem. We are talking right triangles when we do Pythagorean theorem, right? So how is a right triangle supposed to help me find the distance between these two points? Good question. Okay. Here they are plotted on my coordinate plane, right? That's my three, seven and negative three, negative three. So what we want to do is make this line the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Okay. So how we do that is pretty easy. We're just going to make a triangle, okay? Now, because these lines are straight, I mean, I guess the other one's straight, it's just slanted, right? But because they are um, go along with the coordinate plane, I guess you could say, um, it's easy to just count how long they are, right? So from here to here, you could count it is just 10, okay? And from here to here is six, okay? All right, so now we have a right triangle where I know two of the sides. If I know two of the sides, I can find the third side using da, 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 the Pythagorean theorem, right? Okay, so when I use the Pythagorean theorem, if you need a review on it, I'll link one in the corner. My legs of the triangle are the A and B, right? And the hypotenuse, the one across from my right angle here is C. Okay, so I am going to label these, sorry, as we're going to have A and B, okay? And this is my C, which is what we're looking for, the distance between those two points, right? Okay, so I'm just going to start filling this in. So we have A squared. Sorry, I feel like I have a lot going on here. <laughs> there we go. A squared. So we've got 6 squared plus B squared, which is 10 squared equals C is what we don't know, right? So C squared. Now, if you had done 10 squared plus six squared, just flipped them, you're gonna get the same answer. So don't worry if you flipped those, okay? All right, so now we're just gonna keep solving. So six squared gives me 36, and 10 squared gives me 100, right? This is still equal to C squared, okay? When I add those, I get 136, equal to c squared okay c is almost alone but i want to get rid of that squared right to get rid of that i'm going to take the square root of both sides okay all right now the square root of 136 if you stick that in your calculator it's not going to be very pretty <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're just going to try and simplify this radical as much as we can okay without an ugly decimal so if you need a review on how to do this, I'll link one in the corner. But what we're going to do is we're going to take 136 and break it down as much as we can. So I know that 2 times 68 gives me 136. And then I'm going to circle any prime number. So 2 is a prime number. Okay, and then I'm going to break down 68. So that's 2 times 34 gives me 68. I'm going to circle the 2 because it's prime. 34 can still be broken down to 2 times 17, and both of those are prime, so I'm going to circle both of them, okay? Then we're looking for any doubles, okay? So I have two twos, which means I can pull a 2 out of that 136, okay? Because 2 times 2 is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2, okay? So I'm going to pull that out, so I'm going to have a 2 on the outside of my radical, and then what's still left inside of the radical is 2 times 17, which gives me 34, okay? And that is equal to C. And that is my answer, okay? If you do want to know the decimal to kind of give you a bit of an idea, because I don't really know what 2 square roots of 34 34 looks like, right? If you put this in your calculator, you're going to get 11.6619 and it keeps going. But that kind of gives you an idea of like, okay, it's a little over 11 and a half, right? So the decimal can be helpful, right? To kind of 
give you an idea. We just typically like our answers to be a little cleaner than that. Okay. Um, last thing I wanted to mention is usually when we introduce a square root into an equation that we're solving, usually we use a plus or minus sign. Okay. So if you're like, why didn't you use a plus or minus? That is because we are talking distance here and you can't have a negative distance, right? So we didn't need to use the plus or minus in this scenario. Okay. All right. Hopefully that made sense. If anything I did didn't make sense, those videos are linked for you, but hopefully this made sense. Bye.